All right, on this adventure, we did something a little bit different. I went thrifting multiple times this week. And so I'm going to show you what I found at those thrift stores. Um, I went out on four different days during the week. And then we also went yard selling one day. So I was able to find a bunch of stuff to resale, a bunch of good stuff to list. I filmed this video the same time as I did the intro to my last one. And as you know, if you watch my last one, the audio was not great. So I have since gotten a microphone, but I did not have it when I first showed y'all all my thrift store finds. So I am going to do a voiceover for the rest of this video and pop up pictures to go along with the video so that it's a little bit better, hopefully. So bear with me going forward. I have my microphone now, so hopefully things will be better. But let's get to it. So on the first day, I went to my local Goodwill bins, and I know that a lot of people that post videos online about their bins, it's like $1.49 a pound and everything is weighed, but my Goodwill bins is just not like that. Mine is $1.95 a pound for clothing, shoes are $3, purses are $3, hard goods they price randomly at the register. Um, but it's usually based on size. Everything that I got this time was basically clothing, except for one small hard goods item, um, well, sort of hard goods item, and another reusable bag for when I go dumpster diving. So let's see what we got. First, I got this really cute full skirt rainbow twirl dress, and it has already sold. It sold in five days and I took an offer of $22.50 on it. It was too cute not to bring home. I did notice that it had a stain on the front and then another one on the skirt. Um, the one on the top just came out in the wash, but the other one didn't. So I just noted it in the listing and it still sold in five days. Since we're going into spring and summer, I'm looking at swimsuits more and I got this Coastal Waves one piece. Um, it's plus size and new without tags, but it does have a flaw. So again, I disclosed that. So hopefully someone will still want it. Again, since it is plus size, that does add some value to it. Um, just plus size in general clothing adds value. Then I got this Grace Karen dress that is new with tags. This isn't a brand that I was familiar with, and it's not anything that's spectacular. But when I find new with tags at the bins and it's lightweight, I'll usually grab it because it hardly costs me anything. Also, this dress is a really cute polka dot pinup style dress. And it's a plus size, which again, adds value to an item. So I'll take a chance on stuff if it's this lightweight and has some factors and I find it at the bins. Next, I got this cute dress from the brand More to Come. Again, not a brand I was familiar with, but it's new with tags and lightweight, so I took a chance on it. Um, it's a floral mini dress with ruffles and ruching, and through research, I found that this is a brand that is featured on the Revolve website, and um, right now, there's not a lot of this style that's been sold in the last 90 days. But we're just coming out of winter, so I'm hoping that it will do well. A lot of their other style dresses that were winter did well in the like sold comps that I was seeing. So I'm hoping that since we're going into spring, that this will be something desirable that somebody will want. Next is a pair of Orvis joggers. And I've heard a lot of people talk about Orvis, so I was like, oh my god, I found Orvis. And it was at the bins, so again, at the bins, I'll take chances on stuff. These joggers don't go for a lot, 
But when you get them for about $2, even if they only go for $15, I'm still making money off of that. So I'm willing to take that kind of profit margin when I'm buying something at the bins. Next, my one little hard good item that I got was these cute little ladybug rain boots. They are American Girl branded. And these aren't going to go for very much, but they only charge me 25 cents for it. So 25 cents into probably $10 is perfectly fine for me. Next, these are kind of like style based pieces that I picked up. Um, they're two scarves, and I wasn't familiar with the brand, but they just looked really cute, very, you know, mod, very retro. Um, this one already sold. It sold in one week, and I took an offer of $18. Um, I thought the brand on these scarves was Usna, but with some research, I found that they are actually by a designer named Vera Newman, and this first one was a long rectangle scarf. And this next one is more of a square. And this one is very big and it feels like silk. It does not have the labeling on it, but it's silk. So I think that this one will do well also. I just have to wait for the right buyer. So on Tuesday of this week, I went to an Amazon return store that we have in my town. So I went there and it was dollar day. And so I was looking for some stuff and I've seen Rachel Strickland pick up stuff for her son to list on her eBay. And so I've seen her pick up stuff like this before. So I got 12 total of these F-150 XLT like side name plates. So I picked up those and I saw that sets of two of these are going for around... $20 with uh, free shipping and they didn't charge me much for these everything that I got from this store that I'm gonna show you I got for two dollars total so I have next to nothing into each of these items and so I think like about 15 cents into $20 well I mean shipping will take out some but 15 cents into around $15 I'll take that all day Next, I got, I think I got three of these. They are the inserts for, in a cup holder for a CRV. Um, I got three of those. And then I got some sets of two cup holders for a Jeep. And one of these already sold on Poshmark for $12 plus shipping. And I got five of those, so four left. And then I got one random AMG trunk plate for a Mercedes and it already sold for $8.50 with free shipping. So $2 for all of these and I've already turned that $2 into $10 profit and I still have 13 items left to sell. So I could make a decent bit from these. So after that, I went to the new thrift store that I was telling you about. Like I said, I did not know that this was a thrift store, and I went there twice in this week. So that first day, I found a pair of Danskos, and I've sold Danskos before. They're great. The first time I sold Danskos, I sold them for like $40 in an hour of posting them, and they were a pair of Danskos that I picked up off the side of the road. But so when I saw them, I was like, cool, Dan's goes. I know that brand. And I was excited to find them. So excited that I forgot to dry rot test them in store. So they were really cute, super cute, green, just the clog ones, which apparently now that I've done a little bit more research, I found out that the clog ones aren't going for as much. They used to go for around 40 or more, and now they're going for maybe 25 to 30. But when I started doing some research on them and making some drafts for my eBay listings, I was like, oh, I didn't dry rot test them. So I did, and a chunk 
I don't know if y'all can see this, a chunk came out of the sole. And there's also a chunk missing here and that I didn't notice. And on the other shoe, there's a whole chunk missing there too. So moral of the story, check your stuff really good before you leave the thrift store, even if you're super excited about it, because I've done that many times before. And luckily this time it only cost me $2 and 20 cents. So a lesson that I did not fully learn because the very next day I went back to that same thrift store and one of the first things that I found was this Rockaware jumpsuit. It's vintage Y2K. It's really cool. And I found a comp online where someone in the last 90 days sold one exactly like this for $80. So I was really excited to find this. And I was so excited that I did not notice that it was missing a button. I still listed it, but I had to price it a lot lower than I would have if it wasn't missing the button. And hopefully someone will still be willing to buy it with the missing button. Because I did pay $5 for this. So... Then I got this red trench that I got for $2.50 and it is a travel smith trench and it has a hood and it's a nice women's raincoat trench. It's a size large and hopefully I'll get $30 for it. And then lastly on this day on Wednesday I got a third piece which I already listed before recording this and it was an anthropology brand skirt and it's the brand Maeve and it was just a really gorgeous piece so I listed it right away. On Thursday I went to two different Goodwills with my mom for their 29% off sale on the 29th of February and at the first one which is in a nice town that's nearby I found six items and at the other one that's in a little bit worse part of town, I found eight items. So I was a little shocked by that, but that's okay. You never know what you're going to find at these places. So the first thing that I picked up is this vintage um, city silk knitwear. Um, and it's just a little camisole. It's a size large and it is 100% silk. It is so soft. So I just thought that it was just a really nice basic staple piece. There weren't a lot of comps for it, but I'm hoping that I'll get like $25 to $30 for that. Next is going to be this shirt by Boston Proper. And I thought this was great because it had a lot of fun detailing on it. It's got all of this embroidery and sequence, and then it's like a faux wrap top. And then at the bottom, it has a cute peplum style like ruffle with even more detailing. And this isn't a brand that I've bought before, but it's a brand that I've heard some other YouTubers mention. And so I'm hoping that I'll be able to do good with this one. The next one I was really excited to find. It is a J. Jill shirt and it is this beautiful emerald green color and it's a long tunic top. Um, it is from their Love Linen line. So it is 100% linen. I thought that it might have been a linen blend, but it's 100% linen. It's also in a plus size, which is going to add value and it's new with tags. These retail for 100 brand new, so it's no surprise that this sold fast since it had all those factors going for it. It sold in three days for full asking price of $39.99. The next one's just a style piece I picked up. I thought it was gorgeous. It has this royal blue embroidery, like embroidered roses down here at the bottom of this like sheath dress. It's not a fancy brand or anything. It's just New York and Company. 
It's also a size large, so it's a good size. And it was just so beautiful with the off the shoulder neckline. So going into spring, I just thought that somebody would want this for sure. And with the 29% off, my cost of goods at the store was about $5 a piece. Next, I was able to find a good pair of shoes. These are Uggs brand, and they are one of their like Chelsea style boots, and they are really nice. These I did pay a little bit more for. They were priced at $14, so with the 29% off, they were a little over $10. But I'm hoping that I'll be able to get 50 for them because they're in really good condition. And then I paid for all of that. And as we were walking out, my mom found this. And so Velvet is kind of in right now. And look at this lining. Isn't that lining gorgeous? So it's a Lane Bryant and it's a size 24. It has really neat buttons. And then on this side, over top of where the button closure is, there's this really pretty ruffling detail. And then on the back, it's like at the waistline, this really cute, almost a bow, but not quite, but just like really nice detail. This jacket sold on Mercari for an offer of $24 in only four days. So that was a great sale. All right. So at the second Goodwill that we went to on Thursday, I found a total of eight items. And again, my cost of goods at this store was around $5 a piece. So the first thing that I picked up was again, another velvet piece. And so this is a vintage New York jeans, like jumper overall dress and it's real cute with the buttons on the side very 90s very like dark academia so I'm hoping that I'll get around 40 for that one I think it's very on trend right now all right this piece this this next one is another dress and it is a linen blend and it's by the designer David Warren. I'm not familiar with his stuff, but this one I picked up just because of the style of it. It's very retro, is very pinna, very like 1960s. Almost like I could see stewardesses back in the day wearing these type of things. That's the vibe it gives me. It does have shoulder pads in it, but I just thought it was so gorgeous that somebody will want this. But yeah, I could not leave it behind. Hopefully, I'll be able to get at least 40 for this. The next item I was excited to find, I found Free People. And this is a pair of their harem pants. And they are a size large. So they have, you know, the dropped crotch. And they're just in this really fun design. And anytime I find free people, I get excited because I don't find it around here that often. We don't get it a lot in my area. So yeah, free people. And then next I found two pair of Judy Blue jeans. This one I thought was a pair of their capris and it's got embellishments on them, which were missing some of them. And that should have tipped me off that they were fake. The label on this pair was different than on the other pair. And I didn't realize it until I got them home. Through doing research, I realized that Judy Blues typically have a style number on their tag and they are faked frequently. So make sure to look the style up. I know that Judy Blue doesn't go for a ton, but they do have a good following and a good sell-through rate, which is why I was excited to find two pairs, but it was too good to be true. The second pair that I found, they are real, and they are a full-length pant with the raw hem, and they're a size 18. 
they sold on Poshmark for full price of $35 in only five days. So like I said, they do have a really good following and sell quick. This next one my mom found. It is a brand called Etro, which I've never heard of. It's not an American brand. It is made in Italy. And it is a linen piece, which since we're going into spring and summer, linen pieces are something that I am looking for. But I just thought this print was just absolutely beautiful. And so the comps were kind of all over the place. But almost all of their linen pieces that are listed are listed around 100 and some have sold around there as well. So hopefully I'll get at least 75 for this one. Um, it is around a size 12, European, European size 44, so a decent size, and I'm hoping that it will do well. The next two pieces we shifted over to the men's section. And I found a Duluth Trading Company, kind of like thick, heavy, like shacket kind of shirt. And apparently Duluth Trading Company, some of their men's shirts and stuff aren't doing as well as some of their other pieces. But I think with this being heavier weight and more of a shacket, I'm hoping that it will do well. Hopefully I can get 20, probably shouldn't have picked this up, but hopefully it will still sell. And then the last one from there was a brand that was completely new to me. And it just felt really nice when I found it on the rack. And so when I looked it up, I was shocked because of the sell-through rate on these. So this is a men's brand and it's called Poncho. Here's what the label looks like. And so they're men's shirts. There were around 200 listed and 800 sold. Just let that sink in. 200 listed, 800 sold. That, what, is like a 400% sell-through rate? I'll take those odds. This is a long sleeve and it has, you know, it's quality. You can just feel it. It feels really nice. So if you come across these, you will feel the difference when you feel it. It does have the vented back like a lot of the performance shirts have. Um, this one does have quite a few pulls on it. But despite that, it sold for an offer of $37.50 on Mercari in only five days. So if it didn't have the pulls, I would have been able to get closer to $50 to $60 for it. But still, this was a great sale. Love when items sell this fast and definitely excited to learn about a new brand that has such a great sell through rate. All right. So on Saturday, my husband and I, we went out to several yard sales and we had luck at one of them. The one that we had luck at, the lady there was pretty much saying $2 an item for clothes and for the pair of shoes that I got there. So I got quite a bit. It wound up being eight pieces, and she was like, just make it an even 15. Cool. So the first thing that I got, I did get a pair of shoes, and they are these very cute heels, and they are Michael Kors, and they're a faux cork heel with an ankle strap and a peep toe. They're in great condition and they are a size nine, which is a good size. If I wore heels, I would keep them, but I don't. So I got those. That was the first thing that I got. And some of this stuff I didn't even look up since it was only $2 an item. Like this, it's a wetsuit. I know that I can sell a wetsuit for more than $2. So I was like, I'm willing to take a chance on it. So it is new with tags as well. It is a brand called Lamorkin. I don't know how to say that. There's a double consonant at the end that makes it weird for me to try to pronounce. But I figure that at $2, I will learn a little about wetsuits at the very least. 
but I should make at least something. The next thing that I got is a brand that I don't think I've found before, but I have heard people talk about them. I know that some people have said that the brand is not going for quite as much as it used to, or that not all of their items perform as well. So they try to find things that are interesting in this brand or more substantial pieces. So I'd say that this is interesting. This is a pair of capris and this is the brand Soft Surroundings. Um, this is a petite, but it's a petite large. And I just thought they were absolutely gorgeous going into spring. So for $2, I figure if I could at least get 20 for them, then that would be great if not more. So we'll see. Next, I found a Harley Davidson shirt. It's not a spectacular one. It's just from, where is that? Um, some town in Wisconsin that I'm not going to try to pronounce. But again, it was new with tags and it's an extra large. So I figure at $2, I can make money on that. It doesn't have to be a crazy profit margin if you're getting it for $2. Next is another piece by Soft Surroundings. And it's like this cropped bolero jacket with all this beading on it. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. So it is a size medium, but with all that beading, I figure that it will do great. And hopefully I'll get 35. Next is a shirt by Garnet Hill, which is another brand that I've heard people talk about, but that I don't know much about. I just thought that this shirt was really cool. It has almost like a balloon sleeve, but not quite. It's plaid and it's very lightweight. And I realized that this was new without tags. I didn't realize it when I first got it, but it still has the button inside. And it's 100% organic cotton. And it feels really nice. It is very, very soft. But so it is a size six. But at a size six, I feel like it's a little bit oversized because I'm nowhere near a six. And that seemed pretty wide. Lastly there, I got two more pieces. These are a pair of Ralph Lauren jeans. Paid $2 again for these. They are boot cut and we're going more back into the boot cut style, flare style, wide leg right now as what's being trendy. So $2 for a pair of Ralph Lauren boot cut jeans. I'll take that. And then last, I had no idea about this brand and it's on a very generic type tag, um, but it has a very vintage feel to it. Um, it is this lady luck, like tribal long sleeve shirt. Um, tribal stuff was very popular in the early 2000s. Y2K is back in style. So lady luck on the sleeve and then on the back, she is on a motorcycle. And so I wasn't familiar with this, but I felt like it was on trend right now with Ed Hardy being back in style and stuff like that. I just sold a pair of Ed Hardy jeans recently and they sold very fast. So that type of stuff is definitely back in style. So that's why I picked this up. After we went to all our yard sales that we had on the agenda for the day, we decided to go to another Goodwill that we don't frequent very often. And we were able to find a few things. At this one, they were having a 50% off, I think, their orange tags. So I'm pretty sure four of my items were orange tagged. So that brought cost of goods down to around $5 an item here. So first we have this brand, and I wasn't familiar with it, but I looked it up and thought that I could do well because of the style elements of it. It is a brand called Pretty Angel, and it's this two-piece, um, there's an under bit to it that's spaghetti strap, and this flowy piece goes over it, and it's got really cute ruffle detailing down at the bottom, asymmetrical, 
and I just thought it was a really cute piece for going into spring and summer. And I'm hoping to get like $30 to $35 for this one. Next is a Talbot's 2X Petite like faux wrap dress. It is a midi length. I don't know what this pattern would be considered, but in comps they called it a medallion print. It very much gives me paisley vibes, but it wraps at the bottom and has the side ruching. And with all those factors, plus it being a plus size, I figured it would be like a good staple piece. And hopefully I'll be able to get at least $30 for this or maybe a little bit more. The next one I was excited to find. Again, like I said earlier, if I find free people, I get excited. I now know to look for the little metal tab. It's tiny. My eyes don't see it well, but this dress is absolutely gorgeous. It is long, it's a maxi dress, button up the front with cute little sleeves and detailing there at the waist. This one is 100% cotton as well and really, really soft. And this one sold for an offer of $35 in only one day. So a very fast sale. And I am super happy with this pickup. Next is a brand called Savannah Jane. And this shirt is a tunic top. And it just looked so pretty and had all of this gorgeous embroidery at the top. So I had to look it up. It's not a brand that I was familiar with, but comps looked good. However, when I went to list this one, I realized that the armpit seam was torn. So I did give this one to my mom because she liked the colors and she'll just sew it up and wear it. The next two were vintage style based pickups. It's a, by a brand called Erica. And again, I just sold a vintage piece that was this button up the front style and it sold really fast. So I'm kind of keeping an eye out for that kind of style right now, um, which another YouTuber that I watch, I'll link her below. Um, she has talked about the style of dresses that Phoebe on Friends wears. And like this feels like something Phoebe might wear. I don't know if she would wear this bright of a pattern, but yeah, it's just a long maxi dress with this beautiful red, black and white tropical print. And the Erica brand seems to be performing pretty well. So I got that colorway. And then I got the same dress in this colorway. So both of these were beautiful patterns. Very tropical, very beachy, very 90s. So I'm hoping that both of these will do pretty well. The last piece that I got at this Goodwill and was the last piece that I thrifted this week, I couldn't find comps for. It was this brand, Ajiba, Ajiba, I'm not sure. I think that this may be, um, it's a Middle Eastern brand for sure. But it is this beautiful, long length, like duster jacket, trench coat. I did a Google Lens search of it, and I think that it is like a hajib jacket. Um, with a little bit more research, I think it's like a Jill Bob. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but I just thought that there was such gorgeous fabric on this. And I'll put a picture up because holding it up does not do it justice. It has structure to the collar. It's just so pretty. It has a tied waist trench style to it. And the lining feels so nice, very satiny. There weren't any material tags or anything. And I couldn't find any comps. So this one is a little bit of a gamble that I'm taking. 
but I feel like it will pay off. And I've listed it high to start out. So I'll keep y'all posted on if this sells and what it goes for. But yeah, so that was my week of thrifting and yard selling. And I feel like I did pretty good. Several things have already sold and sold pretty fast. Hopefully the rest will sell. They are all listed on eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari where I sell. So if you're interested in a video where I talk about what's been selling recently, let me know. I have been trying to be more consistent in my business. And have been listing five items a day. I know for some people that may not sound like a lot. And for some people that might sound like a lot. But I do tend to be an inconsistent person sometimes. So I'm trying to build more consistency into my business. And make it more of a full-time thing instead of just a part-time thing. And so for the month of February, I broke just about every single record in my business because of that consistency. So like it pays off and I am seeing the rewards of it. So that's exciting. If you want to know more about that, leave it in the comments. Let me know in the comments and I can do more videos like that. But yeah, so that was this time. If you like this type of video, let me know, like the video, subscribe if you're new here and you want to see more. But yeah, again, I'm Jen the Trash Panda and I do a little bit of everything. So tune in and see what my next adventure will be. I may have bought a pallet, so you'll have to watch the next one to find out. Bye.